Hi everyone, welcome to Olive City Homestead. It is the end of November here in Northern California. And while fall is different everywhere and much colder in some of your climates, it's still got a lot of similarities wherever we live if we're gardening. And I have a lot of chores I need to finish up this fall before winter sets in next month. Now any chores, any projects that we get done now is only gonna put us so much farther ahead when spring comes and we're ready to get out in the garden full time again. So today I'm gonna to be tackling four of my big chores I still have left to do. First of all, I need to get over to this star jasmine path, as I'm calling it. It's a, a pathway I've been hacking out for quite some time now, too long, between my blueberry bushes and my star jasmine slope. And I need to get back to that and get that done. Uh, the second thing I wanna do is I have some fruit trees, some young ones that I've discovered this season are really not in the best spot. They just get too much shade, um, most of them where they are. And the other one, for whatever reason, it's just not happy there. So I'm going to be moving those young little fruit trees over into the north side of my backyard area. Uh, where I think they're going to do really well along with the other fruit trees I already have growing there. And I want to get that done before the really cold weather sets in. And then the third job I'm going to tackle today is um, there are a few patches of Bermuda grass, which I'm battling all the time here, but I pretty much have it in control in the garden area. But along the outlying edges, there are a few spots I need to clear out. One of my strawberry trees is being overrun with that Bermuda grass and need to get that out of there. And then the fourth project I'm going to do is I want to finish planting my garlic. I planted probably two thirds of it a few weeks ago, but I wanted to do it successively. So they're not all ready to harvest at the same time. So I still have my music garlic to plant and I want to get that out today. And I also want to plant some onion seeds. I did plant a lot of onion bulbs a few weeks ago, but now I want to plant um, a good amount of onion seeds and it's about that time for it now. So come along with me today. I'll have some easy gardening tips for you along the way and we can have a little conversation if you want to participate in the comments afterwards about what's going on in the fall both here and where you are and also fall color. It's everywhere and we can enjoy it together. Look at these. Aren't they beautiful? These are Galardia or blanket flower. Such a vibrant orange red tipped with a gold. The bees just love it. I see another little job. I've got clover and Bermuda grass creeping in the edges of this flower bed. Well, that'll be a job for next week. But I sure do enjoy this color, don't you? All right, well, here's the problem. This is, if you don't recognize it, star jasmine. And oh my goodness, the time has come. I have been putting this off for months because it's been so hot. Well, in the spring, I put it off because it was my busy time of year in many ways out here in the garden. And then it got to be hot and I just can't even imagine myself doing this at all in the heat. But the star jasmine is not doing well and it's doing very well both at the same time so if you look at it you can see sections that are shorter and kind of have burn leaves and then you have sections if you get in close where bermuda grass is coming up through it and you have sections that are oh let's see if i can get down and show you they're like getting really tall like four feet tall i have um a whole lot of blueberry bushes in a um, nice raised bed there but this star jasmine have grown up in the last several months and are starting to intrude into my berries i need to cut a path right between the star jasmine and my blueberries this is gonna Oh, for one thing look a million times better and for another thing it will allow me to regain area for growing what I want to grow like this berry bush it will give me access to the Bermuda grass roots not just the runner so I can actually get it out of this area you know as much as you can with Bermuda grass um, it's even overtaking this um, purple tree kale 
which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to cut it all back away from here. And it, once I have a walkway between the blueberry bushes and the star jasmine, I will be able to water the star jasmine more consistently and easily but at the roots from underneath. So then I won't end up with burned leaves from water hitting the top of them. So this area is going to look a lot different because I'm going to tackle it today. I've decided there's a breeze. It's way cooler this week than it was last week, about 80, and that's not bad at all with a slight breeze. So we'll see how this looks in a little while. I have finished the path. It's about four to four and a half feet wide. Nice and wide, yes. I made it that way on purpose because it is definitely going to grow inward, west toward the blueberries again. Um, but by cutting it back so deeply, I've given myself room to maintain it. And I will maintain at least a two and a half foot wide path. Now you'll see right here is the worst of the Bermuda grass I was mentioning earlier. And I'm going to definitely come back here, dig that out as best you can with Bermuda grass. And uh, I'll just have to keep up with that and lay some cardboard and thick mulch down right along the edge of that to help um, get rid of it eventually. You can conquer it, but it takes a lot of patience and a lot of ongoing work. But I'm really happy with that. Of course, that means I have a lot of cleanup to do. And there's the stuff I just hacked out. I keep using that word hack because that's what it feels like when you do this manually instead of with a hedge trimmer. But I did want to show you the blueberry bushes. One of the main reasons that I did want to clear that path was because of these blueberry bushes. First of all, the star jasmine was growing into the bushes, and I can't have that. <laughs> and secondly, I didn't have access to the bushes from both sides. And when it comes to harvesting, I definitely want that. These bushes are growing bigger and bigger. Every year I had a fantastic harvest this year. Now my bushes go all the way down to the end. Uh, the last bed has some experimental ones, different varieties, and I'm not so thrilled with how they did, but you know, I've learned to give them a couple of years and see, because they might improve a lot this next year. I did not know though, until I got blueberry bushes, um, just how gorgeous they are in the fall. The fall color of blueberry bushes is amazing. And you know, you could say it even is Christmassy because it's bronze, but it's also green and red. So yeah, I just love blueberry bush coloring. And this stuff, well, that's a job, isn't it? I got to cut that up and put it in a compost pile. All right, time for the second project. Let's go tackle that Bermuda grass. My strawberry tree and my gomi berry bush next to the blueberries, they really need my help. There's the strawberry tree, my arbutus, you need though. You can see here the new strawberry fruits or the Kumara that are coming on strong. And look at that. All that Bermuda grass has got to go. This is uh, the very edge of what used to be the lawn and so it has grown really strong here. You can see from there on out we don't have it because I've taken it out but Right here, I'm gonna dig a big circle around that so that, I mean, it doesn't seem to be harming the tree, but I just, <laughs> just from a pure maintenance standpoint, I need to get that cleared away from the tree. So I'm just loosening up uh, the mulch. This isn't even dirt here that I'm digging into. It is just, some mulch entwined with the Bermuda grass roots. And I'm just loosening it. I'm not going too deep because I certainly don't want to disturb, disturb the roots of the strawberry tree. Okay. Now, while I'm doing this, if I look a little awkward, it's, uh, well, part of it just might be me. <laughs> but part of it is because, as I've mentioned a few times on here, I broke my wrist a year ago. Actually, I broke my right wrist about four years ago, but it healed great. 
but which is good because I'm right-handed. But I broke my left wrist um, a year ago, actually, almost a year ago, it was beginning of December last year, and it broke in like three places. Look at those. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it hasn't healed so great, despite a lot of physical therapy and ongoing exercises I do daily. It's just not healed great. But guess what? Life goes on. And it has improved a lot. So. so what I'm aiming for here is not total annihilation of all Bermuda grass because that is not going to happen. It just isn't going to happen. But I can, well, okay, never say never. Maybe in a decade. But I can keep it under control. And you might say, well, then why haven't you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. I've kept it under control and eradicated it even 95% of the way in most of the backyard area. I don't have it out front of my property, my two and a half acres. But somebody planted it here in the back. And, and I've gotten rid of a lot of it and I've maintained a lot of it. However, I am about as far from perfect as you can get. And I'm super busy. And so basically, like everyone, I have to make priorities as to what is urgent, what's important, and what's not so important. And although Bermuda grass looks horrible, um, certain plants, especially trees, can handle some Bermuda grass around them and it doesn't hurt them. But there does come a point at which, both for my sanity and for the tree's sake, I want to get rid of it. So that's the point I'm at now. There we go, getting some of those roots out. All right, well, I'm not going to make you guys watch me do all of this. I'll bring you back at the end. Well, that looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> so, of course, I could go crazy, which my perfectionist side wants to do, and just keep coming out farther and farther, but I stopped because otherwise... I've got a pile this big right now. <laughs> and otherwise, if I kept going, I would try to do the whole... Uh, area behind me which is impossible and I have other things to do but this tree looks so much happier now and I'll come back and finish a little bit later I want to go down the side of the pool there and around that mulberry bush there but uh, that looks great I'm not trying to eradicate the Bermuda grass around this strawberry tree here um, but it is possible to eradicate it though difficult. I would have eradicated it on my what was my front lawn. There were uh, two sides to my front lawn when I moved here seven years ago and on the right side I dug out the sod completely down about six inches and then filled that in with wood chips and I have not had the Bermuda grass come back there. However, it is very difficult to get out and that is because it, the roots go down a long way and even if you leave a piece half this size in the ground it will grow again and you see um, the roots there on the end those don't even have to be present you could just have um, a section from my fingers upward with no roots on it and that can regrow bermuda grass so that's why if you actually want to get completely rid of it you have to dig um, if you want to just deal with it and keep it under control as i have in certain areas of my yard not around the strawberry tree I like I said I let that part go although now let me just flip you around it does look great and it only took 15 minutes that's because the roots that were there were not deep in the ground they were all surface level in the top inch to two inches very easy to pull out because they were in just wood chip mulch however if it's in the actual ground you're gonna have to go down six inches and you're gonna have to get it all out because any little bit can regrow if you want to just deal with it though and maintain, you can do what Charles Doubting does, the no dig method, which is what I follow in my garden area. So along the edges of my garden area where the Bermuda grass does try to encroach, I simply keep it under control at bay with cardboard layered heavily with wood chip mulch. And I continuously add new wood chips um, every, well, probably twice a year actually. 
And if I happen to see a piece of Bermuda grass coming up somewhere, I get it out immediately over there. And that is working fabulous in that area without me ever having to dig in the ground. And why might I not want to dig in the ground, especially where I'm planting vegetables? Uh, because I don't want to disrupt the soil structure and the life that's underneath the, the top of the ground, the, the sod. Um, all the life down there, all the bacteria, the fungi, the mycorrhizae, I don't want to disturb any of that um, structure and life. And so this has actually worked really well because in addition to smothering out the Bermuda grass, the cardboard and wood chip mulches that I put down and then the continuous compost I lay down uh, every year, often twice a year, um, that is also feeding the soil. So that can work. There's two different methods, but if you actually want it out, you're going to have to do um, the method I used out front. And I've decided back here I'm not going to do that, at least not at this point, because this other method is working quite well. Now way over here on the other side of the pool, we are seeing another strawberry tree, a younger one, shorter one, but you can see there is no Bermuda grass here. And that's because I've already smothered it over here with cardboard and mulch and it is not on the edge of what I would call the lawn. And so it's not being constantly attacked by Bermuda grass roots like the other side. It also gets more sun, which is why the fruits on it are ripening faster and why it's sending out all its new blossoms to ripen into berries, which takes a full year. So you have ripening fruit at the same time you have your new blossoms coming out. I'll link to my video I did recently on the strawberry tree and why you might want to try to grow one. Some pretty roses. Geranium. Sweet Alyssum. And beautiful Osteospermum. So the reason this grapefruit tree looks a little sparse, although look at that, there's new growth there and there's new growth there. But yeah, it does look quite sparse. And that's because before I put up my duck fence on the expansion to their run, I had brought the ducks outside and uh, they managed to get to the tree. I'm not really sure how, I don't really remember. I know they didn't get loose, but they somehow got their little beaks, bills, whatever you call them. They got them on the grapefruit tree and they enjoyed that. Didn't you? Didn't you, girls? And Batman. Anyway, it's looking healthy again now, filling out with new growth. However, it is too shady for it here. It's in the sun right now, but uh, citrus likes full sun, and this gets too much shade from mid-afternoon on. So I'm going to move it somewhere that I think it will do better. You guys all happy now? Lots of mud to play in and look for more bugs. Clean water that you can get dirty as fast as possible. Yeah, they're happy. Unlike people, they don't take much to please. <laughs> Back to work. All right, this is another tree I want to move today. This is a tangerine tree. And although, again, it is in sunlight right now, it gets even less sun throughout the day than my grapefruit tree. It's done well. I mean, it's a brand new tree. Six or eight inches there is all in the growth. But I think it would have done a ton better if it was in the full sun. The reason it's done so well is that it's been getting a lot of runoff from the duck's pool mixed with their droppings, so a quite a rich um, water mixture it's been getting regularly. Okay, so I have taken the sod off of the top. Bermuda grass here in Northern California, uh, over the winter, it turns this color, it dies out, but it's not really dead, only the surface is dead. It's really quite alive under the surface. Now I have um, spots in my lawn that are green because they're for instance, right over here, 
because I've watered around it. This is a uh, Buddha's hand citron tree. And so I don't know if you can tell with the lighting right now. The lawn, if you want to call it that, around this citron tree is quite green. But most of the lawn, I don't water it at all and I let it die out because to me it's not a lawn. It's just here <laughs> holding the soil in and it will be green in the spring and then by July it's died off and that's fine with me. If I ever want it to be green, all I have to do is give it a little water and if I ever want to take it out, it'll be a lot easier if the top part of it's dead. Anyway, I have removed the sod here and I have dug a hole that is saucer shaped and this is a very young tree so I don't have to dig it very deeply and it's about two and a half to three times the size of where the roots are on this tree. And I have shown you two different ways you can remove the dirt. If you are planting in ground that has grass or weeds or uh, a combination, if you are putting a tree directly in that type of ground, um, I recommend you don't just dump the soil you've dug out of the hole directly onto the weeds or the grass or the uh, dried out grass as this is because then when you go to put it back you're going to be putting back a lot of seeds and debris into the hole so you can either if you have a bucket you can pile it up this bucket was already half full of potting soil so i did not dig that 15 gallons of dirt out of the hole um, and then you can also take something like this as an empty chicken feed bag and pile it on something like that that would make it easy to dump back into the hole afterwards and I want to show you this hole is already too deep for this because what you want so I'll just put some soil back in what you want is you want it to sit at the same level it was planted before so if you get it from the store in a pot you want the soil that you planted in to be at exactly the same level the soil in the pot that it came in was at so I'm gonna stick this back in this uh, bucket here with water get its roots under the water there okay so what I'm gonna do now is this soil is going to go back in the hole so that it will raise the height of the tree. One of the perks of putting the soil on something is that you can easily go through it and take out any really bulky roots like these or any really large rocks. You don't want to take out all the rocks because rocks are great for drainage. So then you're going to put it all back into the level that you want to get your tree at the proper planting depth. And you just want to make sure you get all of the major rocks and roots out. The tree would deal fine with it even if they were in, but you know, why not? Okay, I would say that needs just a little bit more. So I'll meet you back here in a sec. All right, so I've got the tree sitting in the hole. It is graft, which is very important, that you put to the north or northeast. Well, I say it's very important. It is important. If you don't, it's probably okay, but it is best to face it north or northeast because it prevents the tree from being too sunburned or facing too much wind. It's facing the graft, the vulnerable, vulnerable part of the tree away from the intense sun and um, so that's that's why you want to put the graft joint facing the north or northeast we also want the tree straight up and down which sometimes can be confusing when you're dealing with a um, stake which this stake looks pretty pointless i'm going to take that stake off <laughs> it's diagonal right now it's not even supporting this tree so i'm going to take it out in a second but the tree looks nice and straight and i've got plenty of um, space for its roots to spread out. whoops to spread out so now all i have to do is fill in the soil now i will not be uh, putting fertilizer in this hole it's really recommended that you don't um, because that doesn't want to stand up on its own. I'll just hold it. Uh, because if you were to add uh, fertilizer into this soil, it's kind of confusing to the tree. The tree needs to get used to the soil you're planting it in. And so uh, it's best to start out as you're going to continue. 
So after I moved the tangerine and the grapefruit tree, I decided I needed to move a few more. This is a fig tree, already lost its leaves. It's a tiger panache, and it wasn't in enough sun. So I've moved it over here with my other trees. I've got a pineapple guava. There's the grapefruit I planted today. Along the fence there, I've got my uh, goji berries. Oh, uh, this is a Santa Rosa plum. That is a pluary. There is that tangerine I planted, another uh, Ariops. And this is a fig, this is a strawberry fig. Um, and it's starting to lose its leaves right now. That's what fig leaves turn yellow and then kind of crispy before you lose them in the fall. That's a brand new tree my dad brought me this year. And oh my goodness, those figs were good. Isn't that some beautiful color? I'm loving how my cabbages are looking right now. Purple tree kale. My youngest one. And it is growing taller and taller every day. Apricot leaves. So this is where I am going to plant my music garlic bulbs. Um, half of the bed right now isn't fully in use. It's got some lavender seedlings and an ornamental cabbage and some mint. But this half, I've just added a layer of compost um, to the top and I'm going to now just simply make little uh, ditches basically for the garlic bulbs to sit in. Now if you look at different videos and read different articles about garlic you will read contradictory information sometimes you'll read to plant garlic two inches deep and sometimes you'll read to plant it six to eight inches deep in fact sometimes you'll read if you're in a warm zone like me zone 9b you'll read you cannot grow hard neck garlic here however other places you'll read that you can, and I personally know several gardeners who do grow hard neck varieties of garlic in this zone, 9B. So really what you want to do is find what grows locally. Talk to actual people who grow garlic in your area. And um, if you don't know anyone who does, go to a local nursery and find someone there who grows because that's really your best bet. What you hear online, people are very well-meaning and I'm sure what they're saying works for them where they are, but microclimates are a real thing. And also everyone hasn't experimented with every variety. So, you know, that's up to you to do that. So I'm gonna be planting music garlic here, which is a hard neck variety. And we're going to see how that goes. So this is the music garlic and I'm going to be taking it apart and planting it now. So I've got my little channels drawn in my soil and I'm about to start planting the music garlic. I did want to mention the other two kinds of garlic I planted uh, about a month ago were bogatier, which is marbled purple stripe. And that is supposedly really good in this climate as well. And then the other one was Russian Red. It's a hard neck too, so all three of them are that I'm using. Um, but it's the only one that I'd consider a little bit borderline as to whether it'll grow here. So we'll see. I like to experiment. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that experiments are, you know, just my thing. <laughs> and uh, this is the first time I've grown garlic other than a random bulb or two. So I'm hoping to get a really good crop, but you never know. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with garlic, as I wasn't until recently, there are two main kinds, hard neck and soft neck. The hard neck kind, like the music here, has this center stalk, and it is hard, and it pulls away from the cloves, or you could say the cloves pull away from it. Um, this particular um, bulb has six different cloves, and as you can see, they're quite large. So they should do really well. When you're planting garlic, the only ones you shouldn't plant when you open a bulb are any cloves that are small. If they're really small, I mean, you can plant them as an experiment, but the bigger they are, the fatter they are, the bigger, fatter bulb they are likely to produce for you.
and also for you beginners. And hey, I'm one too, so there's no shame in that. There's always a first time to grow everything. But just like with flower bulbs, you want to have the pointy end up and the flat end on the bottom. Now, I am burying these about two inches. That's what my friends who plant garlic in this area do, and they have success. I'm thinking that some of the times that you read to plant them deeper might be in colder climates because the ground freezes and they want it below that level. But to be honest, I'm not sure. I haven't researched that since I don't need to where I live. <laughs> so these are going in about two, two and a half inches deep. I should have been able to fit 54 bulbs in here and there were nine of those bulbs and the first few had six cloves each so I thought I was going to get 54 out of all of this but actually a few of the bulbs only had five or even one had four really fat cloves so I have a little section at the end that's big enough for seven or eight more gar garlic cloves and I had two bulbs of the Bogatier marble purple stripe left so I'm going to plant one bulb there and then the other one I've got some um, one gallon pots that I'm going to put those in. So I got quite a few cloves out of that bulb although there were three or four that were tiny. I'm just going to use those for cooking and these medium sized small to medium sized ones I think they'll grow bulbs they just won't be as big as those music ones probably but definitely going to go in the ground. Um, you can see here why they're called purple marble stripe at least if the glaring intense sunlight lets you. <laughs> you might be wondering what the heck this is. This is an old screen door I had not yet thrown away because I replaced my uh, back patio sliding door screen. And this one was torn away from the frame at one point. So I taped it up there in the corner and I laid it across here so my cats don't get in here and dig up these garlic bulbs. Um, I've never had squirrels get down here in my back patio area, but I just want to have this down for a little while. Once they start shooting up, then I'm not going to worry about it. Now one thing I'm doing differently with the music garlic than I did with the Bogatier and the Red Russian is that I'm not mulching this. I mulched both of those with um, spent hay from my sheep, so it's mixed with some cold manure sheep droppings. Um, I'm not mulching the music strictly because, well, two reasons. One, I don't think mulch is actually really necessary here um, because of the fact that it doesn't get too cold. In 9B, we get down to the low 30s um, in the winter and with an occasional, like maybe five or six times a winter, down into the mid to upper 20s. I'm not thinking it actually needs mulch, um, but I'm doing it both ways so that I can, of course, experiment and see if one does better than the other. Now, um, other than a few pots to do the remaining uh, Bogatier bulbs, I am set. My garlic is done. Now, I was supposed to do my onion seed today, but I am getting kind of pooped, so there's always tomorrow. One of my favorite things to grow is purple fountain grass. I just love the look of it against the sky. Mulberry leaves looking beautiful in the sunlight. I have mulberry trees all over my two and a half acres, along with my olive trees. And while the olive trees stay evergreen, the mulberry trees turn to gold every fall. And there's the olive trees, or a few of them. Well, I didn't get everything done I'd hoped for, but I got a lot done and that's what counts. You know, it's important to have ambition and to set goals, but it's also important to be satisfied and happy with what you do accomplish. Take care of yourselves out there. There's beauty everywhere, so go outside and enjoy it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that too. And you'll know whenever I upload new content if you hit that notification bell.
Thanks and have a great weekend, everyone. Oh my goodness, my lemons, they're coming off tomorrow. That will be another video because I'm going to not only show you how to zest your lemons, dry the zest, juice your lemons, I'm also gonna share with you a great lemon curd recipe. There you go, there's some greens. All right, girls, enjoy yourself.